So what's a sequence? Well, sequence is just like what you would think. It's a series. It's a, um, a linear ordering of, in our case, items. And uh, of course, we talk about all access structures as being organizers of items. Hierarchies organize items hierarchically. Um, sequences are organized items uh, sequentially. Item one, item two, item three, item four. Um, some other things that kind of go under the cover term of sequence, sometimes we'll talk about a browse sequence or a browse order. Um, the idea of browsing somehow implies a, a, a linear sequencing, although the center of that term is kind of sometimes changing and you might talk about browsing now also being a hierarchical uh, operation, but let's keep, it as, um, let's keep it simple and say that when we talk about uh, a browse sequence, we're talking about a linear sequence. We, you look at item one, then item two, then item three, then item four. Uh, wizards are also sequences. You do the you do the operations in a wizard in the order prescribed by the people who created the wizard. So it's like a procedure. You go through there one step at a time. Uh, the idea of a next and a previous item is also a concept that's covered by sequences. Let's um, pause for a moment and, and contrast next and previous to back. Back is really a historical operation. Back says which items have I seen in time order. It's almost, an, it's, it's more like uh, an index by time than it is a sequence. And we'll talk about what the difference is between, um, uh, between indexes and sequences a little bit later, but for now I want you to see that there is two concepts that are operative, a next and a previous concept. Next and previous are the set items that belong next and previous logically, and back and forward really mean take me back and take me forward in time through the topics that I happen to have um, been viewing. Uh, ranking algorithms we're going to talk about as being uh, sequential rather than being indexable, even though a ranking algorithm will usually order items numerically, and you'll see later on how I differentiate um, the fact that they're both ordered numerically, but one's a sequence and the other one's an index. Uh, and then finally, the idea of a procedure, a stepwise procedure. First you do this step, then you do this step, then you do this step, then you do that step. Uh, that's also an example of a sequence. So sequences, um, what the hallmark of a sequence, what, what characterizes a sequence, and what I think really distinguishes it from any other access structure is that the items are ordered in the order that, or are sequenced in the order that the author would like you to consume them. Um, and so it, that you are expected to start at the beginning and go through in order, progressing to the end. And that's what really distinguishes it from the other, um, from the other, uh, from the other access structures that we've talked about. So how does the end user see a sequence? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a command to them to proceed through this information in this particular ordering. Uh, and it says there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's the end to your consumption of this information. Contrast that to the idea of a random access to the information where, uh, where you access things um, in any order that you want based on your needs, what you think about at that moment, um, what, where your whim takes you. Uh, sequence, on the other hand, is a prescription. It says you really should consume the items in this order. There's a reason for that. Maybe the later items depend on the earlier items. Maybe the um, uh, maybe uh, to understand better the context of the later items, you need the earlier items. Maybe the earlier items are setup or introduction or context to the later items. There's all the reasons why you would sequence things. And of course, um, uh, the narrative in, uh, in, say, a fictional work is almost entirely bound to this form of uh, access structure. It's a sequential, uh, it's a series of events. Usually those, are invent those events are in time, but not always in time, but they're always sequential. The narrative of, um, except for radical experiments, the narrative of novels and other fictional works really depend on the sequence. You can't read the pages of a novel in any order. There are other kinds of information bases that you can read in any order. So the sequence is a, is a, is a pretty fundamental and a pretty, um, a pretty serious concept of information access where we take items and we put them in the order that we expect the user to consume them. So how does that seem to the end user? What do they, what do they think about? Well, it's some sort of logical flow through the information. It's the idea that um, uh, there's a right and a wrong way to progress through this information, and because I'm going in sequence, I know that I'm going the right way. Um, obviously, if it's a procedure or a wizard, um, that, I, that, 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 um, that concept is magnified because if I go through that procedure or wizard in the wrong way, really bad things might happen. My credit card might be charged before I tell them how much to charge it for, for example. Or I, you know, if I put step three before step two, uh, my computer might blow up or my nuclear reactor might blow up. 
Okay, it's also um, the idea of a privileged path. Let me talk about that for a moment. Um, there are many paths through the information, and the author can privilege, that is, give more priority, or give more precedence to some paths through the information than through other paths through the information. And this idea of a sequence says, this is a good way to traverse this information. It's a little different than saying you have to traverse that information, the information this way. It's saying, I've thought about this long and hard, and I think this sequence of items is a good sequence to follow to get to your target, to get to whatever it is you're trying to, in the end, get from the, uh, consuming from that information base. Managers don't really use sequences to, um, to, for their own organizational structures. As I said before, really hierarchies and indexes are the two real big ones, and they're massively bigger than any other ones for managers in terms of organizing information. But obviously the manager has to think about, um, think about sequences as they're building their information base. So it's more the architect type manager than, say, the uh, person who's maintaining the information base or per person who's adding to the information base. But certainly there are some issues there. For example, um, is it necessary to have a sequence? We'll talk a little bit more about that later, why sequences are so uh, rare and misunderstood on the web, but um, it's a decision. And it, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be left to chance whether there's a, a sequence or not. It should be a logical work through decision of should we prioritize certain paths to this information, and if so, towards what goals? Uh, the next question is how will that sequence be represented to the user? When we go through the exercises and some of the, um, the more uh, in-depth topics about the architecture of sequences, you'll see that there's lots of choices about how to represent this idea of next and previous and to show, that there, um, show, show whether or not there is a next or previous item. Uh, so the final thing that I want to say before we move on to um, more detail about sequences is uh, I'd like you to think hard about them and decide for yourself where and when these sequences are necessary and uh, not forget about them. I guess that's really what I want to say here, a plea for you to consider sequences as, as useful as any other access structure in the right context and for the right purposes.